Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. Today I wanted to come out and share a dream with you that I was given a few days ago. And I believe this dream uh, speaks to the topic of our spiritual warfare that's going on and how we as the body of Christ can overcome our adversary. But there are very specific things that we need to do in order to have that victory. And I'm going to share what I, the dream and what I believe it means and the scriptures that uh, I feel support this dream and go along with the message the Lord has for us. Okay, so in this dream I was given a couple days ago, uh, I was just observing it was a stage. It was like a play was, was uh, unfolding on this stage. And there was uh, a bunk bed, all right? And then on the right there was like this chute and it had, I don't know, like people but they were soldiers they were all dressed in in military uh gear and they were soldiers and they were lined up and getting ready to be shot out onto this stage and then over on the other side was a singer and it was like he was singing a song about jesus i knew it was a christian song and i believe he was talking about being in christ hidden in christ that kind of thing and so as i watched if a soldier was shot out onto the stage there was basically only two options he could either go over to the, the lower bunk and sit and wait peacefully, and there he's, he was safe. He was fine. But if he didn't do that, it was like he was immediately taken out, killed. And so there was, there was just two options. That was it. And so when I woke up from this dream as I, as I contemplated it, I, I felt in my spirit that that lower bunk had to do with a place of humility. And I ran this uh, dream also past my friend, Joni Stahl, and she confirmed that she believed that's what that meant. And that, that when uh, we as the soldiers, the good soldiers of Christ come out into the, the scene of life, okay, that stage is the stage of life. And, and the fact that everybody was dressed in military gear indicates that we are at war church. And there's really only two places for us to be. We can either be hidden in Christ in a place of humility, covered, protected, resting, waiting, or doing something else on our own, not hidden in Christ, not humbled before the Lord, and uh, basically become a target of the adversary and taken out by the enemy. And so there's, there's scriptures I want to share with you but that I believe tell this same story church that in order to have victory over our adversary we have to come into Christ in a place of humility submission to him like a good soldier I'm going to go over that scripture uh, in order to defeat the enemy now James talked about it in James chapter 4 if you want to turn there with me in your Bibles so in James chapter 4 James paints a pretty grim picture of the body of Christ probably not far from where we're at today. And I'm just going to let the scriptures speak for themselves. And then he goes into explaining uh, the key for the body of Christ's uh, victory over the enemy is humbleness before God, all right? So he starts off in verse one, where do you, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desire for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Right? This is telling me that they're asking for things just for themselves, not in accordance with the will of God, which is where our hearts need to be in prayer. When Jesus said, taught the disciples how to pray, he said to pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, speaking to the Father. Not my will, your will. And Jesus uh, was yielding himself totally to the Father. So James is, is talking here about people who are just not yielded and are looking to God to just give them more uh, of what they want. And in verse 4, he says, Adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously? But he gives more grace, therefore he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. 
Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Okay, this is the key right here is the humility. And in order to get to that place, though, all this other stuff has to be dealt with, okay? I mean, James refers to the body of Christ as adulterers, murderers. This is not good. And we have to soberly consider what he is saying because, church, we know that uh, largely the church has become apostate and uh, there is just a lot of self-focus, a lot of idol worship, a lot that is not of God going on in the so-called church. And so if we want to have victory as the body of Christ, then we have to yield ourselves to God. We have to uh, recognize that that is the key. That is how we are going to have victory over the enemy, submitting ourselves to God first, as James said, then resist the devil and he will flee from you. But if we do not submit ourselves to God, remember on the stage, those soldiers came out, the ones that didn't go to the lower bunk, that place of humility and rest, they wound up being taken out by the enemy immediately. There were no other options. And I think that's where we're at church right now. And then Paul talks about being a good soldier in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. Now remember, those were soldiers that were coming out on the stage of life. So we're in a war, we're in a battle. And so uh, Paul gives us insight on how a soldier is supposed to, to behave. And he says in 2 Timothy 2, verses 3 through 5, you therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Hardship, okay, we're talking being in this battle, being a soldier for the Lord. And this is, if you make a decision to follow Christ, you're already in the war, that it's it's a given, it's a part of uh, what happens the moment you're born again. The enemy is going to be uh, going after the born again believer. You know, we've got to be willing to suffer for our faith in Christ. And he says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this war life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. All right, so just like uh, James was talking about in chapter 4, we have to get ourselves detached from the things of this world, from our own aspirations, our own desires, and you know our prayers that are self-centered and, and be willing and ready to just please God. All right, and, and in verse 5 he says, And also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he comp competes according to the rules. Okay, so... The rules here, this is God's will. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He didn't say my will, he said thy will. And when Jesus was uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane and, and he was being faced with the, the torturous death of the cross, it wasn't like he was jumping at the chance to do that, but he was willing to do it. And he prayed, your will be done, Father, your will be done. Jesus said that he didn't do anything unless he saw the Father do it. And he said he didn't say anything unless he heard the Father say it. Jesus didn't come into this world to do his own thing or to tell people what he wanted to tell them. He came here for the Father's will. Now imagine if each one of us followed that example, well, first of all, it would necessitate that we all be hearing from the Lord or we wouldn't be saying anything. And we just have to get to that place, church, where our hearts are in alignment with the heart of the Father and where we want his will above our own and we're willing to suffer, to, to put this flesh to death so that God's will can be done in this world through us. And lastly, the scripture uh, in 2 Corinthians, Paul says, he talks about how he was given a thorn. Paul had been given so many supernatural experiences and divine revelations that 
this flesh, as he referred to it as a messenger of Satan, had been given to him, and he, is, he was asking God to take it away, all right? It wasn't comfortable. And this is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 through 10. This is how the Lord responds to Paul's request. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Okay, it's a paradox. As we recognize that we are weak, we are led then to be emptied of our own ambitions and our own perceived um, gifts and talents and, and everything the world says is valuable about us. And we, we begin to turn to the Lord then exclusively for what we need, the power, the strength. And when, when Jesus said in John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remain in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. All right, this just drives home the reality that church without Jesus, we are helpless. We can't do what we want to do, let alone what God has planned for us to do. So when we recognize our weaknesses and at the same time recognize that with God, all things are possible, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, then the power of God can come into us. And so the key to that power being unlocked is humility, coming into a place where we stop looking to our own resources and start looking exclusively to the Father, to the Lord Jesus, to fill us with his power and strength. And then, church, we will be equipped to truly carry out the will of the Father and be the good soldiers that the Apostle Paul was talking about and win this battle, not just fight the battle and, and be uh, worn out, but I mean overcome our adversary, right? This is the key, humility, coming into that place of humility. And from what I can see in that dream, there is no middle ground. We are either going to humble ourselves before the Lord, wait upon him and receive a supernatural infilling and power from him, or the enemy is going to take us out. I hope, I pray, church, that you will take all this to the Lord in prayer and ask him to give you confirmation about these things. I hope and I pray that this message blesses you and that uh, you will be the victorious soldiers in Christ Jesus that we are called, that we are commissioned to be, church. As always, it is my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.